I am a vape pen. What's up, homies? This is another episode of I'm Tired of Being a Silenced Little Black Girl. Um, This is my second try at this video tonight. And let me stretch and pray as we lean into it. Father God, beautiful Mother God, universe, Mother Earth, ancestors angels and gods i ask that you come into this space and make it a healing space i ask that you open up my heart clear my mind of the chatter and the outside chaos as that you ground and center my soul i ask that you monitor and meet my higher self monitor my son i pray that my words come out clear i pray that it comes off as me trying to process and understand how do we get an understanding to be able to heal as a community where did this behavior come from and even more importantly how do we start to get the tools to change this behavior how do we be able to take more accountability within our personal lives and ourselves so I would probably putting myself out there, being able to have an honest conversation about this will open up a beautiful dialogue for some self-reflection. So before we start to come to the table as groups, when we know when we come to the table, we know what we're talking about. Instead of it's a lot of gassing each other up and saying, well, you're really a good person, you really don't mean that. And really starting to hold ourselves accountable as you know, I was angry and I did do that. And how can I be better? How do I express that with still honoring my, my, how I feel in that moment without being abusive? These are some things we really need to start to discuss in our community. So I'm going to talk about it from a black woman's point of view. Because that's the only in this lifetime way I can express it. And that's the way I chose to live it in this lifetime. So in that I pray, amen, ashay. Bismillah, inshallah. Let's go. So, through my prayer, hopefully you can see that this topic is about toxic masculinity. Across the board. Across the board. Um, and it's becoming a problem. Because it's getting a way of a lot of us being in tune with our own feminine energy but we're not able to open up our heart space as much as we could have um which is getting away of some healing that can take place and so i cannot push this on someone this is just what i'm observing this is a form of me um expressing myself because the, me doing this is literally me being selfish it's a part of me releasing it out of my mind where it's not fucking with my mental health where it's just constant thoughts in my head and chatter all day where i'm speaking it i'm using all my senses to express myself this is a form of creativity of me, for me and a form of st storytelling and being a griot taking it back old school and that hopefully a beautiful discussion a healthy one can take place out of it a beautiful conversation and an honest and authentic one of accountability on all parts um so i'll start with myself of how i noticed in myself how i had been programmed by toxic masculinity how it showed up in me, how I can still see it when it shows up, and how I'm really maneuvering and owning my masculinity in a healthy way. And this is my point of view of how I see it. I'm still in the process of um, expanding my consciousness to be open, to grow, and change my perspective, and um, evolve. Because that's why I chose to be here and be born. Um, is to have experiences and to evolve. And that's the beauty in human interaction for me. Um, that no matter how the interaction in, ends, because sometimes it can end beautifully, sometimes it can just grow apart, sometimes it can be explosive, sometimes it can be unexpected, but there's still a beauty in the lesson of it. So let's get into it. Okay. 
Florida water. So if you ever like, why I'm doing that, Florida water. And if I ever do this, it's because I used to be heavy set when I got my nose ring. So my nose ring is too big. So it, it dangles out. So I don't like it. So I push it back in. So get all the distractions. I know my crazy, so I'm helping you on your crazy when you watch. So these are my little OCD um, movements. Okay. And my vape pen. So noticing how the fuck this patriarchal toxic masculinity showed up in me, um, I started to notice it in middle school. Matter of fact, younger than that, elementary. Um, I was very aggressive as a kid in a way of defending myself. And I think one of the programming that I developed um, as being a black woman in our culture, subculture, um, is that when you're a black woman and you grow up in an urban or fucking hood environment, one of the ways to survive is you have to be tough. Like you have a have you have to have a hard exterior to be able to survive, to be able to protect yourself, to um, not want to be harmed. Um, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's a something psychologically that is developed um, inside of us. Um, and over the summer, I have started reading a book called The Incidents of a Slave Girl or The Incidents of a Slave Woman by this woman named Harriet Jacobs, who was a black woman during slavery and hid in her grandmother's attic or crawl space for several years, hiding from her master because she was tired of being raped. And in that process, she wrote a book about what she observed. And so, when I write that book, I can really connect to her, excuse me, got to stay hydrated, I can really fucking connect to her of her observation, I'm at this time, so even, so as being a black woman, she like, really had to develop this hard exterior to be able to survive and almost disassociate. So which means that she wasn't present. And a part of nurturing is being present. You know, as I'm maturing into my womanhood, a huge part of nurturing is being present. And so if I'm off and I'm disassociated and I'm hard and I'm cold um, and I'm not communicating, um, these things create problems. Um, and also with this hard exterior that you're just taught because, and I also was raised by a single mother. So when you're raised by a single mother, she too has to develop a hard exterior because she's trying, she's the mother and the father. So she's the disciplinarian. She doesn't know when to take that hide off and know how to just be nurturing. So it was more of this and every now and again, a hug and this and I love you. Um, and I'm not blaming her, just an observation. Um, so those things played a part in my programming. So my father figure was my mother's father, which I love my grandfather. He's 91 years old old school black man um i love him to death he, he can be very narcissistic um but also very giving and very nurturing at the same time so he's a very complex person and i love him very much and he's taught me a lot um he's shown up in ways that has been very irresponsible to the family um, but then he showed up in ways that he was our strength and our backbone. And so that's just the balance of having unconditional love for somebody in everything that they do. And that's just the story of his journey. Um, so this is the person who raised me. And so this is a man who was born during the silent generation. Who ends up giving birth to a baby boomer. And he has instilled in his daughter's the same mindset as him, which is a black man. So you got a black female with the mindset of a black man. So 
it showed up in like elementary i remember like always like challenging and it was weird i wouldn't challenge girls all the time like i would really have to be pushed 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 into a corner when i was bullied by girls like i don't know why it showed up that i was more fearful of feminine energy to stand up for myself but with boys when they tried me i was up and willing so that's really interesting. That's something that I just really actually paid attention to. I mean, that was up until I really did that all the way from like elementary up and through high school. It wasn't until I became an adult woman when I started to like really speak out against female energy like I did masculine energy. Um, so yeah. So by the time I got in middle school, I remember I got into it with two girls. And one of them had a boyfriend, and he caught himself trying to defend his girlfriend, which I'm 5'3". This nigga was like six feet or over that in like the eighth grade. We're in the seventh grade. And he walked up on me. And this is me. I started cussing like a dude, like a sailor in middle school, for real. And I come from like women who cuss. They're very masculine. And, um... I was like, I walked up on that nigga and was like, you lanky motherfucker, I come up there and fuck your ass up too. Like, and it was like, for you five three, what you about to do? But in my mind, all this Aries big energy, this uh, big energy that I have in my, in my mind, I can do this. Somewhere in me, I was like, I could, I could hurt you. Don't try me. So... But I felt like I had to do this. I had to be this level of crazy to not be tried, to not be hurt. So I would just be cussing niggas out. Like that was my defense. So, And it didn't matter. Male or female, bitch, fuck you. So this is how I'm talking to other women. Fuck you, bitch, you ain't shit. Nigga, fuck you, you can suck my dick. Uh, I put take my pad off and put it on your forehead, bitch. Since you want to act like a bitch and have a period, I'll let you have one. Like, literally, this is the words that were coming out of my mouth when I was younger. I told my wee man, this nigga was late and I was teaching him some work ethic. This how toxic masculine. Like, and I'm, I'm putting my wee man up on gang. <laughs> and... This nigga didn't receive it. Like, this nigga was arrogant. So I was like, nigga, die. Who says that to somebody? Like, literally. Like, nigga, fuck you, die. Over some weed. Like, is it that serious? So, like, the disregard for other people's emotions and well-being and mental health <laughs> and triggers and boundaries that I had. So it was constant conflict. And I even noticed this recently. It's constant conflict to, that brings these tower moments for me to have these lessons of observation of how this lesson of this toxic masculinity within myself and others is showing up. True story. And it's related to, if you're an astrology buff, what I'm noticing my north node and my south node and it's because i'm in my south node too much and not enough in my north node and your north node is your purpose in this lifetime your south node is what you were known for and your purpose in your last lifetime if you're into that thing if you're over here and you're into that thing that's what we're talking about okay so it was too much giving too many fucks about everybody else's feelings over mine. Which means I wasn't nurturing myself. So we'll get back into that. I'll get back into that until in a minute. But that was just a little sidebar for you to think about when I come back to it. But getting back to me as a kid and in my younger years of this, the way I showed up in this toxic masculinity of talking like a dude. Like, I would go to the club and dudes would... Dudes would be disrespectful. They would. Grab me your butt, call me you out your name, type shit. Um, just what niggas do. Y'all y'all know how y'all do. Y'all rude as fuck. Um, dudes want to criticize my body. Um, niggas I don't even know. 
I'm like, I don't even know you. Why are you talking to me? I'm not even bothering you. What are you feeling? Need to say some shit to me? Um. So just these triggers of just niggas feeling like they just talk to me any type of way. So another thing, a, a dude would say something to me and I literally would like punch him in the chest. One time I was kicking it with a dude and I hit that nigga in the chest and that nigga reflexed and punched me in the arm and I had a bruise on my arm. And that was like the first time a nigga actually hit me. I was like, this nigga really like laid hands on me that he like reflexed and hit me back. But it didn't like stop me. That wasn't enough to make me like stop. Um, so yeah. The way it also showed up is the way that we as women what we need to talk about is the way we don't support each other in trauma because of it. So like she got raped and molested. She shouldn't have been there. She should have known better. Um, she asked for it. She's stupid for staying with him. Um, I would be very judgmental towards other women in their trauma, which is disgusting in their trauma. Instead of, um, being more nurturing, I was more judgmental, um, which these things would lead to, um, having life experiences in them so I could have the experience, so I could have, gain the wisdom to be able to be empathetic now to, um, my sisters when they are in these experiences. But the fact that I had to go through those levels, I had to take it there. That I actually had to go through it to be able to have some type of empathy towards it. Um, made me question that. Like, why do we, why does it have to go that far? Um, why can't you just feel, um, feel it here? So going through mushroom trips and doing inner, inward processing and inward reflecting of asking myself that. And then looking at how it showed up in my family. And how it was programmed. Um, with how we talk about each other. Um, even in families, like I look at families and especially in the black community, like somebody can experience some horrible trauma and niggas will cuss them out. Like how you cussing me out in the middle of my trauma? That's abusive. Like, and you doing it on the guise of I'm worried and I love you and I care about you and I just want you to be safe type shit. Like, niggas don't even be thinking about how this shit be fucking up the psyche, fucking up the DNA, creating PTSD and other mental health issues within each other. Like, I really am trying to be intentional with the way that I move. And... Um, being respectful of people and myself. Like I'm learning more that I actually move more in regards of being caring about other people's feelings over my own. And that's why I keep bumping heads with niggas. I'm more, I'm moving in secret, trying to protect you. And I ain't speaking my truth and I'm boiling up and raging inside. I ain't even loving and nurturing myself. I'm being toxic towards me. The programming, the programming, and just to watch how it shows up in the subtlety of, that's how I showed up, and the subtlety of how I just watch people and how they project it. Like, I would have dudes, like, why you, dudes be like talking to me, be like, yeah, what up, cutie? Why you hit me on the nose like, like, what is you doing? Get your hand off my face. How you doing, baby girl? Are we serious? What's up, sweetheart? Nigga. It's, it's not natural. And people are like, well, damn, you can't take a comment, man. You can't. I'm trying to give you some attention. I mean, no, I don't want it because it's not authentic. It's not true. And I'm being honest. I'm going through these layers of different realms of consciousness and 
know a, a, a nigga who knows himself, knows how to properly communicate, doesn't do all these extra little things to start a conversation and dialogue. I'm noticing that this is a program because if all of you, if a lot of you do it this way and it comes out this way and it creates, you know, a lot of women have the same complaints. He not nurturing. He don't talk. I don't know how he feel. I don't know what he's thinking. When he get mad at me, he get cold and distant. When he get mad at me, he stopped talking to me for a few days. That's abusive. That's mind con control. That's manipulative. I'm like, no, use your words. And I used to do that. I used to do that to dudes that I liked that I was talking to. Like I would, but they it would be tit for tat. They would do it to me. I would do it to them. Like literally, my stepdad. One of the things he told me, I was dating a guy, and I really, I loved him. I really, really loved him. And he would. We would like when we were strong. We were strong. Like I would just love talking to him like we would laugh but he would like um trigger me on purpose like he would talk to me condescendingly and this was this toxic masculinity shit that I know it's like a lot of niggas do so it'd be like um always talk to me like I don't understand what I'm talking about or I don't understand a topic so it'd be like so that's what you heard you sure type shit and be like what <laughs> like um this is what I observed this is what I experienced like so I was in the process I, you know I didn't have the best education I didn't really didn't pay attention in school even getting older realizing that I had a learning disability so I've really learned over the years how to properly um write and communicate um but like he read one of my papers one day and was like you need and was like basically call me stupid and so to like Imagine having sex with something like that and be laughing and think and be like, oh, she checking me out. Oh, but why are you checking her out? So this, this need of attention, this narcissism, this, um, it was interesting. It's interesting to watch. It's interesting to experience in different levels at different ages over the years to observe i mean whether it's your my father or my stepdad or my grandfathers or men who are associates or classmates like you just just be like what the fuck <laughs> so yeah it's really fucking interesting to observe from the constant why don't you smile nigga for what <laughs> I don't feel like it, but that don't mean I ain't happy. Like, this not about you. But the biggest issue that I've had, and it's showing up, is communication. Across the board, this toxic masculinity when it comes to communication, it's... Extra as fuck. It's extra as fuck. And that's from men and women. It's from men and women. And I don't know if we have to get out of this program and the feminine energy is weak because it's not enough of us in balance with our masculine and our feminine. We too much in our masculine. And it's just too much closed up, closed off cold energy. It, it ain't. It's too much art of war without much, without enough hugs. It's not enough balance. And it's a mess. Because we're not getting to no real healing. No real dialogue. No real answers. No real, you know, change. So I know I can't be the only one frustrated about that. Because I'm, I'm diligently like... Taking steps like, no, I'm not going to use my masculine. Let's let's talk. Let me let's let's have a conversation. I'm going to be calm. I'm going to be nurturing. I'm I'm going to take steps. I'm going to let you back me up in a corner. 
then the masculine comes out, you know, then those traits. And that is how I'm working with myself to find some balance. Um, and not to make it toxic because masculinity is strong. So it's a time and a place when my masculine needs to show up and I let that divine strength come forward and protect myself and be the warrior that I'm meant to be. But it's a time and a place. It's emotional intelligence. It's not directing it at everyone doing my best to name the name and know directly who I'm directing it to. So I'm not taking it out, <coughs> excuse me, at the cashier at the grocery store or at my sister or at my friends or at my clients or just the person walking down the street. So when it shows up, I know who. It knows where to go. And that's if I have a man. I want him to, to walk in that thing. Well, he knows the time and the place. With, with me, it's unnecessary. With me, that this don't have to be there. I'm here. We hugging. We talking. We rubbing heads. We're just laying down. We're being nurturing. So, yeah. And so, even noticing how it's showing up in the gay community with studs. Like, really watching masculine women really sit up here and project their masculinity on to, I don't know these new terminologies, forgive me if I say it incorrectly, because I believe that we're calling sometimes heterosexual women cis women. Um, I'm, I'm trying to get caught back up into the vocabulary, um, but not trying to get caught up in all these words. But to even to watch those project this on more feminine women, Instead of dealing with your trauma and not reflecting, it's like interesting because I'll meet some really, really beautiful people. Beautiful, beautiful people. And again, I do shadow work. So you have to imagine that if I'm your teacher in shadow, that if you come into my my space intimately, I'm going to project your shadow to you. It's going to trigger you. And then the point is, if you trust me as your shadow teacher, because that's what you paid me for, or that you got any service from me for, that then it requires that you're going to have to be open to have a dialogue so I can give you the feedback of, to show you what shadow was exposed. Whether it's your toxic masculinity or toxic femininity. But what I'm noticing is when it comes to this form of having to address someone in the form of their toxic masculinity, it's a lot of this. It's a lot of this. A lot of ego shows up. A lot of this without a... It doesn't have to be war. It doesn't have to be. But we've been so programmed by they, by they out here that it always is a war. Somebody always trying to get my life. Somebody always trying to get me. Somebody always trying, trying to. Well, you wouldn't always be this paranoid if you learn to be empowered by your own divine femininity. Instead of reaching for it and sucking for, for it from someone else, subconsciously or consciously. If you get in tune with your own, you would be in tune with your intuition. Which means you, it's the, a certain level of groundedness in yourself that you would feel it. You feel it in every part of your body. You'd be like, oh, I'm sweating in my hot spots. What does that mean for me? For me, when I sweat in my hot spots, I'm in tune with spirit. So that means, okay. Okay. That means 
I'm in tune. I'm, I'm channeling. I'm communicating with the ancestors. I'm communicating with God. I'm communicating with my higher self. So my intuition is going to tell me what part of me needs to show up in this instant. It's going to tell me, is this really a war? Or is this something that you'd be like, nah, this ain't worth it. And sometimes it starts off as a, nah, this ain't worth it to a, oh, okay. We're in the art of war. Yes, sensei. Yes, teacher, great teacher. Yes, God. Thank you, angels and gods and ancestors. Sit with me, Mother Earth. Come on, higher self. And then you be like, fuck. It'll guide you. Your higher self will guide you. And I'm noticing with myself when I sit authentically in these movements, even when somebody feels like it's toxic masculinity, I know when I'm sitting in my divine self because my, 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 um, crystal, the in I'm integrated. So I understand that there's a part of me that just wants to sit and chill and be in the house, Shh, be creative. But I am also mindful of the parts of me that can be, <sighs> but there's a time and a place for those things to show up. And it took me a very time, long time to start to figure that out. And to figure out my way in doing that, which is respectful to my boundaries, trying to be respectful of everyone's boundaries, but nurturing and taking care of myself because for a long time I've become a martyr. And because being a martyr for other people caused me to what? Not be true to myself, which made me what? Ta Tap into my toxic masculinity because it was resentment there. So rage build up. It was harsh and it's cold. So it's showing up and not p keeping people on a need to know basis. I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell this person that. But this is what you need to know. This is what you need to know. This is what you need to know. Because that's what I feel. It's not doing that. It's no, if I don't talk to you, it's because the ancestors tell me mom's the word. Any other time, I'm talking. Because that's the only way we're going to process. Because spirit, the ancestors to let me know when you come at me with bullshit and what that's being in, in contact with my divine femininity. And again, I'm not perfect. Sometimes it be off. Sometimes it, it be off, off. I can be off. Well, I have to go to, to one of my sisters and be like, hey, check me. And I'll be like, sit with it. You're right. Let me sit with that. Let me go reflect on that. So I'm hoping, I'm, I'm praying that in this, I'm being clear. Because this is one of many conversations. This just is what has come up for me. Um, reflecting on the last 10 years is just coming off the dome without usually writing my notes and I write notes. And just the observation of current um, situations of experience with people. This is another thing that I noticed with toxic masculinity. It's really interesting to observe. So say for instance you're in a situation um, and there's a conflict between a man and a woman especially in the black community, I notice that people will take the man's side first, no matter what. He could be dog shit wrong, but it will be catering to his trauma more in a way where there's no accountability so that that person can gain a change of behavior to become actually better. And that's that's um, from my observation, heterosexual women, moms, dads, sisters, siblings, cousins, aunts, friends doing that, co-workers, associates doing that, gay, straight, whatever. I noticed that. Then I noticed the next layer is it shows up with, um, again, like I said, um, stud more masculine women 
doing it. Taking on more male characteristics and projecting that toxic masculinity and then going where then even heterosexual women men even protect them in their toxic masculinity trying to make excuses for it because you identify it because you see it as the way you process and do things that it's okay it's no need for maybe we should start making some changes for the children But I'm not always right. Just something that I'm thinking and processing. Trying to understand. Truthfully. Even coming to a part. Just to watch straight women cater to straight and masculine women. Straight men and masculine women of their patriarchal training instead of sitting with your own toxic masculinity as a heterosexual woman seriously like I'm dead ass I'm like am I the only one seeing this shit like I want to have a real conversation like literally am I the only one seeing this shit this way am I being clear like, when I ask these questions, I'm at, I'm genuinely, if in the comments you want to get feedback, I'm open, respectfully. With your heart space open. Because I noticed, even in a video that I did recently, I was able to notice that's my mom showing up. That's my aunts and my mom showing up when they get. And I wasn't irate. I was very um, grounded in myself. Very um, clear and um, connected to my higher self and my ancestors and the creator in that video. But I also was understanding and it was a clear. It was a very clear of when to take these traits that I picked up in childhood and use them and when they're not necessary. So giving an example of that, because my mom and her sisters can very much so, um, when they get upset, demonstrate very toxic, demonstrate very toxic, um, anger and rage and, um, and their masculine energy. Um, and even in their feminine energy, um, so I noticed and I knew that it was coming out that even when I was watching myself when I was speaking, I said, and I said it in it. I said it and I got this from my Capricorn mother. So I knew. And so that too helps me is that I have a conscious awareness of when it is coming up and showing up. Um, my, and in, in the, what I'm trying to say, let's be clear because Mercury is about to go retrograde. And for me, I actually get clear with my words. The more we get closer to retrograde, because in my natal chart, it is retrograde. I just need to slow down. So what I'm trying to communicate is when my masculine shows up, it shows up big and strong, like a warrior. Not intentionally trying to be toxic to show my big guns and let my ego show out to show that I hope everything in your life crumbles. No. It shows up because it is the protector in my life right now. So it shows up as the warrior to say, hey, that's not how we're going to handle this. We can handle this in a better way. The way I wish my father and my the men in my life would have showed up for me is we're going to take some accountability here. We're going to, one, respect each other. But you cannot be disrespectful to me. You can say I'm hurt, but if you don't tell me that, what can we do about that? 
You can't gossip about it. You cannot be rageful about it. You cannot be cold about it and think that we're going to get some type of clarification, restoration, healing, and transformation and rebirth. Because, see, I wish the men in my life would have showed up is that instead of telling me to change, to say, hey, let's channel this and direct this in a healthier way. Your divine masculine and your divine feminine. Instead of smashing it all down where it became rageful. But they didn't know any better. So I pick up the baton from my elders and my ancestors and try to do my best to be consciously aware to evolve and change, to know when to show up. What part of all of this is a part of me. I own it. But when does it need to show up? So when I can be, I'm holding myself accountable in the way that I show up. In my divine masculine and in my divine feminine. Because the to toxic masculinity. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's, it's a lot of this when, when we're in it. And we need some more of going inward, self-reflection. And that's how I'm processing it. For today. I may do a video three days from now, three months from now, next year. Where it's different. But I'm being vulnerable to say where I'm at today to open myself up to the universe to say I'm open for new and different perspectives. To change and evolve in an unconditional, loving way. In a respectful way. In a grounding way. Being more in my north note with it and less in my south note where I am doing my best. To not make assumptions. To have some integrity with my words to be vulnerable. To show up in the higher light of it. Because I love myself. And I need to do it for myself if I'm going to be able to roll that over into others. How's that shit going to happen? At least that's how I'm processing it. You may be processing it in a different way. So, that's where I'm at today. And I just pray for all of us to become a little bit more emotionally, mentally, and spiritually mature. All of us. All of us. That's what I pray. Um, and yes. Even though we're all having a time. This is a tower moment on this planet. Things are caving in. Don't be looking for the old ways. We're not going back to that. Lean into this tower moment and start to lean into the healing and the transitioning in the new way. And that's all I can tell you. That's what I'm trying to do. In this energy, which causes some silence, some reflection, um, some accountability, um, some manning up, some womaning up, um, some powering up, um, some forgiveness. That's a big one, Jack. So some forgiveness, which takes time and work every day, periodically throughout the day. And I pray that more and more people become more and more evolved where it comes from. Instead of 1% of the population is um, willing and open in their heart space and their mind space to have a more evolved, expansion um, open mindset to what's taking place on the planet so we can have different uh, perspectives that it goes to 5% to 10% it's just like how much part of the brain that we all use they say we only put use between what 8 to 10% of our brain capacity maybe the more that we open up our consciousness and be open to different perspectives all of our brain cells and neural pathways will open up and reconnect. And it'll just cause us to be a little bit more grounded and open and centered and nurturing and compassionate and empathetic. Just maybe. Little prayers that I have. All right. That's it. God bless y'all. Part one of this topic.
Well, maybe part two because I did another one. But you get the point. <laughs>